HBO's hit show, The Last of Us, has some fantastic economics examples. And in this short compilation of clips, we're going to see the impact of changes in the way currency is viewed and the role of bartering in the economy. Let's watch those clips now. Then. Got anything else? Nothing today. Tomorrow we got street sweeping or sewer maintenance. Which pays more? That'd be the one with the shit. Lake crew, 4 p.m. start. Just shoot you? Yeah, but then what would you do? You're short five. Oxy? Hydro. How old? Three months. From Atlanta? I don't know where he gets them from, I just know they're real. It's real, it's from Atlanta. If I just got a factory down there in the QZ, supposedly only makes two things. Pills and bullets. Bullets and pills. Well, the more you shoot people, the harder it is to sleep, I guess. <sighs> oh, you guess? You want them or not? I need the bag back. How are we doing with the vehicle? All set. So I have to get one last guy in the depot to buy in. Okay, how much? Four of them on that ship, plus me. 600 total. Look, those trucks are shit heaped for a reason. And they don't have any batteries. I know. I can see about 200 for the other guys. 200 for you. Deal. Well, you could have found on the radio. We're actually decent people just trying to get by. Oh. Well, aren't I the lucky one? The stuff we have in the QZ that you don't have here. Books, medicine, machine parts. We can help each other and get that gun out of my face. So what, you were a... prepper or something? Survivalist. Maybe you are decent people, maybe not, doesn't matter. We're self-sufficient here. I don't need you or your friend complicating our lives. Is that clear? That fence's got a year on it, tops. Galvanized wire already started to corrode. I can get you 10 spools of high tensile aluminum last you the rest of your life. Lives. Ready? Yes. <sighs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh! I traded Joel and Tess one of your guns for a packet of seeds. Which gun? A little one. <laughs> Fascinating examples. My name is Matt Rosu. I'm Dean and Professor of Economics at Susquehanna University. I make economics content using pop culture quite a bit. 
So if you like these videos, please click like and subscribe. It will help me out, it will help the channel out, and you'll be informed when new videos come out. So this string from episodes one and three, these assorted clips, are pretty fascinating and give a nice look. Now, The Last of Us, it's essentially a post-apocalyptic world after a fungus taken over the brains of anybody who gets in contact with this fungus, essentially. So there's just barely any humans left. The monetary system as we know it seems to be gone. So it's an interesting question, right? Um, what happens if a money system collapses? And it's certainly happened throughout history some of the time. But what we see in The Last of Us is a move towards ration coupons. So the government entity in The Last of Us here is called FEDRA. And this organization, if you work, you get coupons for whatever ration items. What is interesting is these ration coupons can be used to get the rationed items, or as we see in the clip, um, other people will do goods or services for ration coupons. So there's a, there's a short screenshot of shoelaces. You know, to, to get shoelaces, it, it would cost a ration card, for example. So the current money system, or the existing money system, right, this was based in the United States, so this is Boston, it broke down. People aren't being paid in dollars anymore but they're being paid in ration coupons. Later we see a bigger breakdown of the currency system when Joel uh, is is talking to Bill. Uh, so there's Bill and Frank and when Joel's having this conversation with Bill, uh, they talk about trading. They don't talk about buying or selling. They talk about they each have something each other might want and they can trade. And that's a, that's a pretty common feature as well when a money system breaks down. It ex an economy will resort to bartering, and the only way trades then take place is a double coincidence of wants. The whole thing here, taken collectively, is kind of fascinating. Uh, in today's society, right, if you want something, if you wanted strawberry seeds, for example, as we see in the end, you don't have to find somebody who wants a gun that you have or some other item that you have. You earn money or you take whatever money you have or have saved or somebody has gifted to you and you can go buy seeds for strawberries. Likewise, if you need a gun, you can go buy a gun or whatever other item you might need it doesn't rely on a double coincidence of wants. And that's really one of the key important features of money in society. It allows trade to be made much more efficiently and effectively because the double coincidence of wants is no longer needed. Uh, money also serves as a store of value, which is incredibly important, right? You can work now, hold on to money for three weeks and the money can be used later. Also, um, it's the unit of account, which is also valuable, right? If we're talking about going to get strawberry seeds or a, a dinner out or a new computer or whatever item, you always use the currency to determine how much it might cost. You don't go and say, well, if I want a 12 pack of Diet Coke, that would cost me one dozen donuts. You know, they might be the same price in a grocery store, but you would talk about the dollars it might cost. Here, we lose the ability for money to be this medium of exchange. It, the currency system breaks down. It takes a double coincidence of wants. The ration coupons serve as kind of a pseudo currency in some cases, but not nearly as efficiently. And when that happens, the economy is going to go into a tailspin and very, very fast. And we've seen that, of course, in The Last of Us. So my name is Matt Rozu. Once again, if you like this, please click like and subscribe and look forward to seeing you in the next video.